after the delay, uh, the action potential is going to be sent to here, the interventricular septum. That's this green guy with little squigglies in it, and you might be able to see a little bit of blue. We'll talk about those. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start at the, at the top of the, at the interventricular septum. So from the AV node to the, to the interventricular septum in a bundle called uh, the bundle of Hiss, which Hiss was some, some physiologist, and uh, that's, he discovered this section here, and it's named after him. So the action potentials from the AV node to the bundle of Hiss, and it's going to travel down, and it's going to branch on left and right sides, respectively. Uh, here. Action potentials are come down on their associated side to their bundle bundle fibers, left and right bundle fibers, and then they're going to make their way along the walls of the heart, uh, along the heart wall. Okay, so from these bundle fibers, they're going to split off and then go into what we call Purkinje fibers, which was another guy who got these structures named after him. Can you see that better? Okay, so when action potentials come here, they're going to stimulate the cardiac muscle cells, which, remember, that's the myocardium. And before, I mentioned that they were arranged in secession. It's like a, like a chain-linked fence sort of thing where action potential um, power, or whatever you want to call it, is able to propagate um, from cardiac muscle cell to par cardiac muscle cell rather than have a whole bunch of um, uh, Purkinje fibers uh, 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 innervating each one of these cells. So the cardiac muscle cells are going to stimulate each other and allow for a wave of, uh, of uh, 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 contraction, right? Because or what's going to happen is when the action potentials get here and stimulate these cardiac muscle cells, they're going to squeeze here and then create a wave. So it's going to, you know, create that, that, that flow as, uh, you know, on this side as well. The heart's going to squeeze like that, which brings up a point I don't want to forget. Uh, actually, we'll talk about that right now. Okay, so thinking of how the heart is going to contract, it's going to get smaller. The walls are going to thicken up, but it's going to get smaller. Remember how the fibrous pericardium is going to be anchored to the diaphragm. So if the heart is supposed to be sitting in one place, however, the heart squeezes and gets smaller, uh, how, do, how does that all work? Well, it, it's pretty cool, and it's interesting, too. Here, we have, have this, this line, say, separating the atrium and the, uh, the, uh, the ventricle here. The atrioventricular septum, we'll call it. And when the heart contracts, this is going to go down. And then the walls of the atria are actually going to go uh, get longer, larger. So think about, with pressure and, and fluid within a tube, how's that going to work? When this gets smaller, blood is more readily able to go up through the pulmonary trunk and then go through the pulmonary arteries and uh, continue that circulation. So, you know, it's not like tearing your diaphragm apart every time it contracts and moving it around. It's actually just uh, really moving this line down and allowing for an even more efficient flow of blood. Um, so uh, I, I, I found that out the other day, and I thought that was pretty cool. thought I'd share that with you. Uh, maybe it would spark some imaginations or something. Um, yeah. Okay, so what else do we have here? Let's review the cardiac conduction system. We're going to have action potentials generated here in the SA node. From the SA node, action potentials are going to travel to the left atrium and also... Con uh, 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 propagate towards the, uh, the right atrium as well, but they're going to travel to the AV node, the atrioventricular node. Action potentials are going to travel from the AV node to the bundle of Hiss, which is located in the intra interventricular septum, and then action potentials are going to come down through their left and right uh, corresponding bundle fibers, and then those are going to go to the Purkinje fibers of the myocardium, which is located in the heart wall. Uh, think, uh, I think that's all that I want to talk to you about. Um, here, if, if you want to just click out of the, the video, if, if you got it, I'm going to do a really quick review of everything. I'm just going to go over the terminology so, so we really know what, what's going on inside the heart. 
Okay. So from the very beginning, we have our pericardium. We have the fibrous pericardium, which has the superior and inferior portions. Then we have the, uh, the serous pericardium, which is also divided in two different parts, uh, where we have the parietal pericardium and then the visceral pericardium. Remember, visceral is the same thing as the epicardium, only when we talk about the pericardium, we consider the, uh, the, the visceral pericardium. Okay, so um, fibrous pericardium, serous pericardium is composed of parietal pericardium, and uh, then we also have the parietal cavity, which is filled with um, or, uh, pericardial cavity, pericardial fluid, and then the visceral pericardium. Then we go uh, zoom in a little bit, and then we have the epicardium, which is a smooth layer, connective layer of uh, tissue and fat. Go deep to that, myocardium, and then deep to that, we, uh, we have the endocardium. Okay, so epicardium, myocardium, endocardium. All right, now chambers of the heart, we have the uh, right and left atrium, and then the left and then the right ventricles. <clears throat> uh, blood vessels, we have the, uh, the vena cava, the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, which is going to drain into the right atrium along with the coronary sinus, which you cannot see on this diagram because this is an anterior view. The coronary sinus is on the back. It's going to take in all the deoxygenated blood from the heart itself and drain uh, right into the, the right atrium. Okay, so from the right atrium to the uh, the, the, the tricuspid valve, the, the right atrioventricular valve, to the right ventricle, and then blood is going to go through the, uh, the, the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary trunk, and then the, uh, the, uh, the right and left pulmonary arteries. Remember, arteries away from the heart, veins to the heart. Okay, so from these veins to the lungs, back, pulmonary veins, uh, these are, okay, uh, to the pulmonary veins, and then we got your left atrium, left ventricle, left ventricle, um, uh, a, uh, a, uh, the aortic, semi, a, I'm getting mixed up, okay, the aortic semilunar valve, to the ascending aorta, and then the aortic arch, arch of the aorta. All right, uh, interventricular septum, which is going to contain portions of the uh, uh, cardiac conduction system. We have the SA node, a sinoatrial node, and uh, the AV node, atrioventricular node. Ascium potentials go down, interventricular se septum, bundle of His right at the top here, go down, break into the right and left bundle fibers, and then uh, continue their branching into the myocardium with their Purkinje fibers, which are going to generate or um, uh, uh, I'll allow contract. Con, con, uh, I'm getting mixed up. Uh, allow the muscle cells to contract. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? I think that's about it. I know it was rapid fire, uh, but but it's really not that bad. It's it's it may be intimidating at first, but once you get it, it is it is easy as cake. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, please give me any comments or anything like that. I know I went fast. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, if there's anything else you would like to see in this, just let me know with that as well. Uh, okay, thank you.